Lovers of Lore, thank you for joining me for another Dungeons & Dragons lore video. Today, we're going to be diving into the rise and fall of an incredibly powerful nation, the Netherese. They originally started out as simple farmers and became incredibly powerful mages, which ultimately led to their downfall. So, this all takes place in the region of Netheril, located on Faerun. Netheril was originally a verdant paradise made up of lush rivers, forests, far-reaching lakes, and beautiful plains. It was little more than a gathering of about seven different villages. Slowly but surely, they were able to exert a level of control over the lands around them, civilizing them, and removing threats to mankind. After a period of increasing civilization, the human settlements were actually approached by the Erlani Elves. They opened up political channels through diplomats and introduced the Netherese to the ways of magic. The Netherese were voracious for this magic, and they learned a number of arcane spells rather quickly. It was at this point that the Gathering of Villages actually renamed their alliance as Netheril. Within the boundaries of Netheril, every single citizen was taught the very basics of spellcasting. Everyday citizens knew cantrips that would help them in their tasks. Farmers would have magic that would aid them in their farming. Fishermen would have magic to increase the yields of their halls. Even common housework was made easier with the addition of magical cantrips. Those who showed more promise than everyday citizens in the art of magic became known as arcanists. The group of arcanists started to gain political power which would eventually lead to the nation of Netheril being a majocracy, ruled over only by people who were adept in magic use. So for the first 300 years of their arcane studies, the Netherese magic was totally based upon what they had learned from the elves. But this was all to change when an individual known only as the Finder was able to locate the Nether Scrolls. These nether scrolls completely revolutionized the study of magic in Netheril. They made the elven magic that had been taught up to this point seem crude and incomplete in comparison. So the Netherese threw aside the magic they were learning from the elves and dedicated them fully to the study of these nether scrolls. And over the next few hundred years, the power of the Netherese empire expanded massively. The Netherese Arcanists actually launched attacks against other lands and stole away magic from other nation sorcerers. The next big jump in Netheril's power came with the advent of the Mithalar. The Mithalar were an invention of a great Arcanist Iolum. Up until this point, all magic had to be fueled by the Netherese drawing on the weave. The weave being the source of all raw magic that existed in the world. The Mithalar were magical orbs 150 feet wide that completely revolutionized the way that the Netherese viewed magic. These Mithalar allowed for two major advancements. One was the creation of floating cities. The other was the discovery of quasi-magical items. Normal magical items required the mages creating them to draw on raw magic from the weave, but also bind a part of their own life force into these items' creation. Whereas quasi-magical items could be created without this sacrifice of life force and did not require to have their power drawn from the weave. Instead, the Mithalar were able to power these quasi-magical items as long as they stayed within one mile of the orb itself. These quasi-magical items had a big impact on the lives of everyday citizens in Natharol. A mind-boggling array of quasi-magical items were created to make everyday life simpler and smoother. Using the first Mithalar, Iulam was able to create the first floating enclave Zinlinol. This was the start of the true fracturing of Netherese society. You had a genuine have and have not scenario where the Arcanists who resided up in the floating enclave were the ruler class. The peasant class were the individuals 
with low levels of magic power who were forced to reside on the ground. Over time, more of these Mythalars were created, and more and more floating cities dotted the air, over 50 in total of all different varieties. Some were floating nature islands. One was even an inverted mountain tip. More and more of the Netherese aspired to have one of their own floating enclaves. Basically, a promising arcanist would stake out their own territory and grow their magical powers until they had reached the point where they were able to create a floating enclave and take their place amongst the ruling class over all of Netheril. For thousands of years, the Netherese were the dominant magical force in their part of the world. And this lasted until the mage Karsis ruined everything. Karsis was a prodigy even amongst the most powerful arcanist. In virtually no time, he had a complete mastery of spellcraft. Over the course of hundreds of years, he rose to power, creating his own enclave and also discovering heavy magic. Karsis's discoveries were the wonder of Netheril, but unfortunately they also led to an event known as Karsis's folly. Karsis had become so powerful and understood mortal magic so well that he attempted to transcend the bonds of his existence and to become a god himself. His plan was to steal the power of the goddess of magic so he could ascend to godhood himself. To do so, he devised an incredibly complex and powerful magical ritual and required near impossible spell components to complete. It required items like the gizzard of a gold dragon and more impressively, Tarask blood as well. Karsus acquired the necessary components and enacted the ritual. This had the unintended effect of tearing apart the actual weave of magic. The weave had already been weakened by previous magical wars. This forced the goddess Mistral to sacrifice herself to stop the weave from coming fully undone. As a result, arcane magic temporarily ceased working. This caused the magic powering the Mythalars of Nethril to wink out and had the catastrophic effect of causing almost all of the Nethril enclaves to come crashing down to the surface. Only three of the Netherese enclaves were saved. They were saved by Maestra, who was the reincarnation of Mistral. As soon as her existence ended, she instantaneously reincorporated as Mistra, the new goddess of magic. Due to the arrogance of the Netherese sorcerers, and specifically due to the actions taken by Karsis, Maestara fundamentally changed the way that magic worked in regards to mortals. Up until that point in time, mortals had been granted unrestricted access to all levels of magic through the weave. But from that point forward, Maestara banned mortals from using higher level magics. She also instituted the restriction that going forwards, all spellcasters must be forced to study and memorize magic, storing it in their mind to limit their powers. Due to this ban, the Mythalars were no longer able to draw upon the weave to power quasi-magical items, and no more floating enclaves could be created. As a result of this reduction in power, the Netherese slowly but surely lost their influence and prestige. The commoners had been forced to scatter and abandon a large portion of Netheril as a result of the enclaves smashing down into the earth. And slowly but surely, Netheri's power in the realm diminished and was forgotten. So, from humble starts as fishermen and farmers that were taught magic by the elves, the Netheri's rose to the greatest heights of power, only to be cast down by the hubris of one incredibly powerful sorcerer. Well, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this installment of Dungeons & Dragons lore. I find the Netheries to be a fascinating people. This was just a summary of what happened to them, but there are many more details involving their society and empire. So, if you're interested in hearing more about the Netheries, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're waiting for the next installment of the Timestream Chronicles, rest assured the final episode is coming. We're in the process of editing it now. If you enjoy the work that we're doing here on Fantasy Geographic, consider supporting the channel on Patreon or by joining the channel membership. Thanks for coming by. I'll see you next time. And remember, lore is life.